Welcome to Chalk Across America. I'm Doug Miles, and we're here in beautiful Sarasota, Florida. And joining us now on our uh, book talk segment, great to welcome a man who's written a very interesting book, particularly if you uh, play the guitar, even if you don't, uh, a lot of great history about it. That's what it's called, The Guitar, the World's Most Seductive Instrument. We're joined today by uh, David Schiller. I believe he's up in uh, New York City today. And uh, David, good to talk with you. How are you? I'm great, Doug. How are you doing? Great. Are you Thank in New you York? I am in New York. Uh, yes. More f- former hometown, so always good to talk to somebody from up there. <laughs> Well, I have to say, I, I, I never played the guitar. I didn't quite have that skill, but uh, I've always kind of been interested in, in uh, you know, great guitar players. And, uh, and boy, you really have uh, kind of the, run the gamut in there from, I guess, uh, what, classical to rock to, uh, to pop to country. And, uh, and so many great pictures of guitars in there. What a great project to uh, be part of. No, thanks so much. I mean, that's one of, the, one of the great things I think about the guitar is that it does. It turns uh, you can use it in almost every kind of music you can think of. Uh, you know, blues, country, rock, pop, classical, jazz, on and on and on. And it makes it so uh, universally appealing, I think. It seems like the guitar to me, uh, I know all musical instruments to uh, musicians, you know, have a personal meaning and maybe they have their own style, but guitar, I guess, more so than anything else, it's also a, kind of a work of art, right? Or a real trademark for musicians, isn't it? Particularly, I you know, the, the so. famous ones. The famous, well, for sure, the famous ones. Um, you know, there's a picture, I have a picture in the book of one of Prince's guitars, the Yellow Cloud guitar, which right. uh, is unlike any other guitar. And then you start to realize there's so many guitars that are unlike any other guitar. Um, and that's because, you know, you can do a lot to them and still, they still retain their essence as a guitar, and yet they, they don't look like anything else. You know, they don't, uh, they don't follow the rules, so to speak. I, I guess the, the electric guitar, less so, because it doesn't depend on that uh, hollowed out part, right? So you can design it any way you want. That's a block of wood, isn't it, on the electric guitars? Is that why? Exactly. You know, yeah. You can, all of, yes, a plank, it's a plank with strings and a pickup. So Leo Fender did this in 1950, and, you know, just, you can do anything with an electric guitar, it's true. You know, make an electric guitar. Do, do we know the, the history, or the, I guess, the origin, I should say? Is it Spain, the guitar, originally? I guess it probably goes back further than that, but, I mean, the modern, let's say, guitar. The modern ones, yes. Uh, in the 1850s, I mean, the guitar has been made, you know, in Europe as a guitar, as a six-string instrument for several hundred years. And in, in the mid-1800s, there was a great builder in Spain uh, named uh, Torres, and uh, one day he was, he was building guitars, and he saw this young woman walking down the street, and he just so enamored of her shape, and <laughs> that reminded him of what the, what the guitar shape should be, and that became, you know, that sort of pinched waist, curvy shape, and that's that was the beginning of, of what all modern acoustic guitars, uh, modern flat top guitars are, classical and steel string. Yeah. And it just came out of that shape and came out of Spain. Yeah, hence sure. the title, a seductive instrument. There, there is some seduction involved. Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> There's definitely seduction involved. Well, you, you mentioned uh, Jimi Hendrix and I guess some of the other great uh, rock guitars. People uh, yeah. kind of associate their guitars with Eric Clapton. Will be another one, right? Uh, Paul uh, McCartney and uh, John Lennon. Uh, I mean, yeah. people remember the guitars yeah. as much as the music, right? It's true. Yeah, I have a picture. I have guitars from all of them. Uh, but you know, one of the ones I love the most in the book is belonged to belong to Clapton. He later sold it uh, to a charity auction for his Crossroads charity for right. I don't know eight hundred and some thousand dollars. But just a basic brown Stratocaster. He called it Brownie, and uh, you can see his the finger marks on the fretboard where he played. You can see the dings and the scratches, and you can even see on the headstock where he would you know sort of wedge his cigarette in in between the nut and the strings <laughs> and. Uh, Probably got lost in the plane, and the next thing you know, it burned down, and there are these burn marks, you know, on the headstock. And, you know, that's such a sense of history, you know. That was a well used guitar, and it made a lot of the music. It, music, it came out of it, made a lot of people very happy, you know. I guess uh, Keith Richards would have a lot of cigarette marks on his guitar, too, right? <laughs> <laughs> I think so. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> Got cigarette marks on his body, probably. That's it. That's it. It's true. Now, Les Paul, yeah. I guess, would he be the considered the godfather or the inventor of the electric guitar, right? I mean, he, he came up with a lot of designs. He did come up with a lot of designs, and he had a lot of ideas about recording as well. And I have a picture of a 
he built this thing, this prototype, he called it the log. And it really was like we were talking earlier. It's a, it's a four by four. Uh, I forget how long it is. And he, he, he put uh, a pickup on it. And then he cut another guitar apart. So the thing didn't look like a log. So it looked, look, you know, it looked like it had, uh, you know, the shape of a guitar. Hmm. And he brought that to Gibson and said, you know, this is, you got to, you guys got to do this. Um, and they didn't at first. And so it was up to Leo Fender, uh, who made the first real mass production electric guitar, and changed the world. And then Gibson thought, whoa, we, got, we have to get in on this. And they got Les Paul back, and they started making Les Pauls which today are considered the, you know, an iconic American guitar. But by the late 50s, they stopped selling. You know, it's kind of mind-boggling now to think about that. Because well, almost so like desirable. the, he was like the Stradivarius of guitars almost, Les Paul, right? I mean, he, uh, yeah. yeah. He really, yeah, he, he was such an innovative guy in yeah. addition to being a great guitarist. Willie Nelson, another one. He played forever. About? Oh yeah, you talk about Willie Nelson. I mean, yeah. country music. Willie Nelson guitar, famous for having those holes in the middle of it, right? I mean, he still plays it. Yeah, <laughs> a great picture of Trigger. What a guitar! It has a yeah, gaping hole and a brace. It has a brace. He keeps bringing it back to the Martin factory, and they keep you know, fix, you know making it sure it works. And it's also <laughs> signed by over a hundred of his friends and musicians. And you can see these names scratched into the body all over it. It's really. It would have, you know, what a story that guitar could tell. Oh, yeah. Uh, a lifetime of stories, a lifetime of stories. I guess Lucille, right? B.B. King's uh, guitar. Uh, everybody knows that name if you follow B.B. Mm -hmm. King. That, that's the everybody guitar's knows. name, Lucille. And Chuck Berry, yeah. and uh, really like the early R&B uh, rock artist, Bo Diddley, another one, right? Yes, yes. And his, his guitar, he has that unique, uh, the, the Bo Diddley, it's, um, Gretsch built it. Uh, it's a, like a rectangle. It looks like a, you know, a lot of, a lot of early guitarists and guitar builders started making guitars out of cigar boxes, and the Bo Diddley guitar looks like a kind of a grown-up cigar box. Right. But one of the fun things about it was that apparently he liked to jump and dance around on stage, and with a traditional guitar, he got the, you know, it's called a cutaway, the, 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 the section that looks like a horn on the guitar. And right. Really, he got that caught in a very... In a very uh, sensitive spot in his body, <laughs> and he decided he, he wanted a guitar without any cutaways, so he wasn't going to have that problem again. <laughs> and he built it. You know, they got this square guitar, so he was safe. Yeah, he, he did have an unusual looking one, right? You're right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Come, come on, the guy. I, I've had a chance to talk with uh, uh, in the jazz world. John Pizzarelli, who's a great guitarist. Of course, his dad, Bucky uh, mm -hmm. Pizzarelli, yeah. and uh, jazz oh, is yeah. jazz is big in in the guitar world. I'm sure you have some of those in the book as well, right? Oh yeah, some of the uh, some of the greatest builders built jazz guitars. I think you know you the people who really love to work with guitars. I think that's you know they you you know a jazz guitar. The wood is carved. Uh, you carve an arch in the guitar, and the guitar works differently than a flat top. But the very first guitar in the book was a, is a guitar that was built by the preeminent jazz luthier in, uh, in America. His name was John D'Angelico, uh, oh. at least you know, before the 60s. And he had a little shop, on, he had a shop on the Lower East Side in New York, and one day a Kind of a middling jazz musician came in and you know ordered a guitar from him, but he wanted something special to stand out. And he, Angelico, built this teardrop, a guitar that's almost you know the body's everything's about as is familiar except the way the body curves at the bottom into a pointed teardrop. Yeah. And that was helped this guy stand out. And that guitar disappeared. It became a legend. No one knew what ever happened to it. One day it turned up in Staten Island in a guitar store, and then. Uh, they immediately called this collector who was known as, you know, the, a great collector, and he, he bought it right away for $150,000. Wow. He said not only was it the most unusual guitar he'd ever seen, but it was also one of the best playing guitars he'd ever seen. He thought that teardrop really gave it something, some extra mojo, and uh, it's a, now it's, it's such a famous guitar. Yeah. The book is filled with uh, not only the pictures, but stories behind uh, the pictures, and it's called uh, The Guitar, the World's Most Seductive Instrument. We've been talking with uh, uh, David Schiller today. And uh, David, you, you, wanna, you have a website you want to direct people to to get the book? 
I think, that, yeah, the easiest is to go to the publisher at uh, workman.com. Uh, pretty easy. And the uh, book goes on sale today. It uh, should be on sale wherever wherever you want to buy books today. It's, Great. Well, we'll put a link on, on our website yeah. as well. But David, real pleasure talking to you, and uh, hopefully we can do it again down the line. But uh, thanks for being with us today. Thanks so much. It was my pleasure. Thank you for joining us today on Talk Across America. Please visit our website at DougMilesMedia.com for more great interviews and content. And if you're interested in any of the books we talk about on the program, please click the Amazon link on our website. It helps support the podcast. Thanks for listening. We'll see you again real soon here from beautiful Sarasota, Florida. I'm Stan Brock. 30 years ago, I formed Remote Area Medical to help people overseas. But then we found generations of families in America, isolated by poverty from the health care they need. Together, we can take dental, vision, and medical help to a million adults and their kids, right here at home in the United States of America.